All right, good evening, good evening everyone. The study session of March 22nd, 2022 is called to order. Donna, can you do a roll call, please? Yes, I will. Council Member Sherman. Here. Council Member Gutierrez. Here. Deputy Mayor Schmidt. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. Mayor Inesco. Here. Council Member Bode. Here. And Council Member McDowell. Here. Everyone right. is here. All right. Tonight we're discussing items related to camping on private property. Police Chief Carol Beeson has details for us. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and members of council. Uh, I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about some changes we've made to an ordinance regarding uh, camping on private property. Uh, we feel this would be another tool that we could use to help address some of the quality of life issues that we are experiencing in Shelton. Um, in this uh, ordinance, uh, we talk about um, folks that are camping on private property. Um, a lot of this deals with uh, the permitting process for religious institutions if they were to try to uh, establish a homeless camp. That this is specific for private property where folks are allowing homeless individuals to camp there to give us uh, another tool to be able to hold uh, property owners accountable for what is going on on their property. Um, as you well know, we have some properties uh, where there are homeless camps uh, and they present some issues for us in several ways. Uh, one of them, of course, being the unsanitary conditions where there aren't any kind of facilities on these properties for people to take care of their bodily functions. Uh, other problems that we end up having have to do with trash and other debris that are left behind at these camps. Um, and of course, uh, we also have the issue of people setting fires in order to keep warm. And that's another one of the concerns that we have. Um, we see this as a, a mechanism that will make us more effective, specifically our code compliance officers uh, and a tool that we can use in order to encourage property owners uh, to take care of these issues uh, Sometimes we have pretty decent luck when we contact property owners and let them know, but other times uh, it's not nearly as uh, effective or efficient to, to do that. Um, this would allow us to hold uh, property owners accountable if their property uh, is considered a nuisance property for any of these reasons. Uh, it would be considered a misdemeanor. Um, it would also allow us uh, to hold not only the property owner accountable, but uh, anyone that is in that encampment accountable for their behavior as well. And uh, I'd be interested in your thoughts. All right, does anybody have any questions for Chief Beeson or staff? Sure. I do. Okay. Council I member. have some questions about when you say holding those um, camping on the property more, um, holding them to another standard. Can you tell me exactly what you mean by that? I mean, what what exactly is, I don't know, your protocol for that and what could happen to them if you go to evict some people on private property? Absolutely. Um, so in some cases, we have some property that uh, they are not developed properties. Uh, okay. We'll go out there, um, one of our code compliance officers, she has an app so she can you know, pinpoint her location. It'll tell us whether it's city property or if it's privately owned property. Um, what we find sometimes is that uh, property owners have no idea that people are out there and that they've uh, set up camps on their property. Um, and many times uh, they're uh, building makeshift facilities for themselves. They're leaving a lot of trash. There's a lot of debris. Um, and uh, we also have other crimes that are being committed on some of these properties. Um, anytime that we find out that it's on private property, the first thing that we do is contact that property owner and let them know about what's going on in their property. Um, in the event that uh, we could get the 
uh, permission to trespass folks, of course, we tell them that they need to move on from there. But after folks have been vacated from those properties, a lot of times there's a significant amount of cleanup that must happen having to do with both the bodily fluids and all the trash that tends to be left behind. Um, some property owners are, are very good about taking care of this. However, sometimes what happens is if the properties aren't secured in some way, after a couple of weeks, people will return to that same area again and set up a new camp. And uh, once a camp is established, then more people tend to come to that area. So code compliance contacts folks, lets them know what's going on in their property. Um, and, and ideally they're gonna take care of those issues on their own. Um, what we hope this would do in the cases where we've got egregious violations that we would be able to hold that owner accountable for allowing this to go on in their property. And in a worst case scenario, be able to abate that property, clean it up ourselves, and then uh, hold that property owner accountable for our cost to do that. Uh, Chief Beeson, um, I actually have no problem with, with this. I did have one concern of what you were just saying though about holding these property owners accountable. So we have a camp on Highway 3 across from the Yacht Club that has been cleaned up once and is on private property. So we can expect the property owner to clean it, they come back, clean it, they come back. I mean, that seems a little unfair to that property owner. Um, that's one question. And the other concern I had, Jeff already cleared up for me. I was concerned about recreational camping for like your family is here from California and they bring their motor home. And that's not changing. That's in 20.36.170. And that's, we're not changing that ordinance. So that made me feel better about that one. But I am, concerned about, like that. I am concerned about some of the property where people keep coming back. And, you know, we, how are we going to handle that? We're going to just keep telling the property owner, you need to clean this up. They, you clean it up, they come back. You got to clean it up again. I mean, maybe we need to have a role in something. And we can't ask somebody to secure five acre parcel, I mean, um, with fencing, I mean, they're gonna climb over the fence anyway. Um, if they're responsible for that property, yes, we would be expecting them to clean it up over and over again, or find some way to make their property less desirable, uh, either by clearing off part of that property or something where it, it would be something where people wouldn't want to stay there. Um, there is uh, all sorts of uh, things that people can do. It's called crime prevention through environmental design to make their properties less of a target for people that would be engaged in either criminal activity or uh, illegally camping on properties. So we could come up with a list of things to help people make their properties less attractive. But initially, the expectation would be that they would clean it up. How about we arrest people? for trespassing and throw them in jail? Uh, if they're on private property and we have a trespass letter that they will allow us to do that, we can certainly do it that way. Well, I can't imagine a property owner not wanting to trespass people that are on their property. <laughs> but uh, that was my only question. So any other questions for Chief Beeson? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, overall, when I went through this, I was looking at a couple other cities and, um, you know, I looked at uh, like the city of Westport, um, for example, a lot of similarities. So we're not, I don't think, you know, far off base from um, other communities um, by any means. Um, I do understand uh, to Mayor Nisco's point, you know, I do understand the the challenge of people who own, you know, larger plots of land and the challenges of securing that, but I can, I can, you know, I, my empathy gets a little bit less because, you know, it's just the same thing as any other homeowner or business owner, the same expectations apply across the board and we have to apply it in a fair and equitable manner. So uh, yeah, I mean, if, if people aren't maintaining their property or access controls and, um, as Chief pointed out, you know, limbing up trees six to eight feet to keep the visual line of sight from, you know, people hiding in there and camping out. I mean, those are deterrents that do, you know, have demonstrated to work in some cases and others not. But, you know, um, I do know we have several properties, larger properties that are, um, you know, prime locations for, you know, unauthorized encampments. Um, and I think it's good for us to to have a clear and understandable code and where the city stands and what we will allow and we won't allow. Um, I am 
happy and pleased to see that we have um, the right language related to, you know, voluntary compliance and corrective action. So thank you for that. Um, and that goes in line with other similarities within our code rewrite that we've been going through. Um, the only thing that I may be interested in learning a little bit more about is we target, it seems like, uh, and maybe that's not the right word, but we, we are pointing at religious organizations. How far of a net can we cast? Because I would maybe not like to refer to it as a religious organization or potentially faith-based or other nonprofit type of thing. You know, um, I'm not sure why just religious, um, if there's any, any input from staff on that or chief. Um, and again, how far of a net can we, can we kind of cast there? Uh, my, my point being is if we're going to do the encampment thing, um, we have seen recommendations where that has, uh, you know, mitigation sites, that sort of thing, um, you know, albeit needs to be permitted and there's limitations set forth in here. I just want to know kind of how, how wide could that go? Um, because if we're going to do that, I want it to be a managed and methodical thing that we can, we can deal with. So. Uh, Chief, I'll take this one. So uh, religious organizations typically are the ones that are seeking to provide facilities for uh, people experiencing homelessness, uh, not only in our community, but in communities around the state, really around the country. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, if at council's uh, discretion, uh, we could expand uh, that into something more general, uh, like uh, community organizations or something like that, where other community organizations that would be interested in providing uh, these types of facilities, they would have the ability to under this code. Yeah, I'd be, I would be um, interested in, in making that a little bit more generalized than just religious, but um, I'll defer to the other council members on their, on their thoughts there. Councilmember Bowie. I don't specifically have a thought on the religious um, kind of kind of understanding what you're saying there, uh, Council Member Schmidt. And then uh, I am definitely all about having more accountability with this. And uh, Mary Niska, you would be surprised how many people won't put those orders on their property. It's actually quite quite a few won't do that. So. Council Member Gutierrez. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, First of all, um, in general, I'm against criminalizing homelessness. Um, however, I believe that this, this measure is, is measured to help our law enforcement take care of uh, nuisance problems that are also health problems. But this is a temporary solution to a, 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 to a symptom of a larger problem that we need housing first and a place to put these people. If we do have misdemeanors, we don't even have a jail. So. Um, I'm just saying that there are things that we need to do as a council if we're going to keep doing measures like this um, and keep criminalizing homelessness. That's all. Thank you. Councilmember Peterson. Thank you. Um, just two points. The first is that Deputy Mayor already brought up. Um, my concern was with terming it as religious organizations and I had understood that to be because the RCW specifically calls that out, but if there is a way for us to expand that, I had thought charitable organizations, but um, city manager night and I think community organizations is even one step better than that. I think that's a, a great move to give people more opportunities to um, provide those services when they choose to do so. Um, and I think that the important thing about this for me is that while we continue to talk about homelessness as the root of this issue and this being a police tool, this also has to do with the respect for private property, right? And so I think that this is a really good step for us to um, try to balance out some of those um, issues that we're continuing to see here. And that, that's the only two points that I had on this ordinance. All right. Any other questions for Chief Beeson or, oh, I'm, there we go. If I, Mayor. Sorry, uh, if I may, you know, uh, Councilmember Gutierrez does bring up a good point, um, and I want to make sure that, in my mind, it's it's clear as well. We're not outlawing, or you know, we're not making it illegal necessarily to have um, you know un unhoused people you know in the city limits in an organized encampment. Um, we're just simply saying it needs to be a managed thing that is permitted, and, and there is a process to go through within the city to do that in a legal um, in a legal way. 
And I think that would be benef- that is beneficial than and more beneficial than maybe you know um, an unmanaged situation. So I, I want to make sure we're we're careful. I mean, I'll, I don't I don't believe that we're straight up criminalizing homelessness, um, but we are doing the things that we can do to better manage this. And I think again, we're not we're not necessarily completely outlawing things like this. We are providing mechanisms to allow for encampments in the city and in emergent situations when there are organizations willing to do the, do the things that need to be done to help folks around house. So, you know, I, I totally understand where, um, where that sentiment is coming from. And, um, and, and frankly, I do agree with it, but I also know that uh, we, we do have to have a framework to work within, um, you know, within the city limits. And I think this is helpful and, you know, we, we have a lot of ground to cover to get, you know, uh, housing and affordable housing and the su- supportive services there too. So um, just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Bode. Yes, I, I would agree with that. But, and, and I by no means feel like anything that we're putting here is criminalizing homelessness. It's just establishing guidelines and rules. And without those, then, <laughs> then, then what do we have? No, I, I agree. And this is to protect some property owners as well that do want their properties uh, cleaned up yeah. as well. Because private property is still private property. So. Yeah. Correct. All right. Any other questions for Chief Beeson or City Manager Knighton? Oh, I see it. I see a hand up, a really light hand. <laughs> Account member Sherman. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, so in times past, we have gone and cleaned up some properties and um, we found sometimes it's kind of hard to find those property owners. After we find them, they might not answer the phone. I found that some of them don't even live nearby. Some of them live in California, some in Florida, and some even in South America, I've contacted them. Um, so if they can't hands-on handle it themselves, do you give them a list of resources local to the area to handle that situation for them? Absolutely, we do. Uh, our code compliance folks uh, get them in touch with, um, there's uh, like uh, the United Way will do a day of caring. They go out and help clean up properties for folks that are in need of those types of skills. Um, we, we try to provide as many uh, resources as possible to help people because ultimately what we want is for the properties to be cleaned up and not to be a hazard for anyone else. You know, ideally we like to contact the property owners and get voluntary compliance for these issues. Um, But this gives us a tool in those instances where we have a problem property and something needs to be done about that to make it safe for the community. the, The main concerns are, you know, the safety concerns of, of fires and whatnot, and then the health concerns of the unsanitary conditions. Absolutely. So say there is a, a property owner that you absolutely cannot contact any way, shape, or form. They're absolutely not responding. And the piece of property um, that is being kind of taken over has become very hazardous. Maybe there's a lot of crime and a lot of activity going on there, yet you cannot contact those, you cannot reach those people. What do you do that? Clean it up and abate it. <laughs> Ultimately, that that is our last option that we can abate it and then we can put a lien on that property so that if they ever try to do anything with that property, that they would have to pay off that lien before they could sell it or develop it or or whatnot. Um, But hopefully we wouldn't get to that point. Our hope is that we would get compliance well before we get there. Uh, And we'd make any effort necessary to try to find those property owners and, of course, document if we cannot find them as to what those conditions were like. Uh, how dangerous it was if we didn't do something so that in the event the owners come back later, we have it all documented as to why we took the measures that we did. Thank you. And any other questions for Chief Beeson or City Manager Knighton on this? Uh, Councilmember McDowell. So um, we're talking about camping on private property encampments. I'm going to change, kind of flip it a little bit. What, what do we do about property owners in town that have just as much stuff on their property and it's just as dangerous? How do we deal with those people? I Anytime know. we get any complaints of uh, that meet any of the conditions that are listed in the, our nuisance ordinance, uh, those complaints uh, are generated either uh, people call in through MaceCom, they put them on the app, they call... Uh, our code compliance folks uh, directly. Uh, Shannon and Lexi will go out and make contact with those property owners. 
uh, and work with them in order to solve those problems. If it's uh, derelict vehicles, they mark the vehicles, they contact those property owners. And again, they work, even if it's property owners in town, they work with them to try to get compliance and offer them resources to help them clean up those properties. Yeah, because those can be just as dangerous and even more of an eyesore because they're right in view of all our citizens in Shelton. So it can be just as dangerous. I'm thinking of one community out, I won't name what it is, but they got it cleaned up and it's starting to get messy again with stuff. So I don't know. Take a picture with the, with the city app and send it to code enforcement. Yep. Uh, Chief Beeson, just real quick, do, do we know what's going on with the Highway 3 camp up there? Uh, which one in particular are we talking right about? Right across from the Yacht Club. It's, getting, it's um, growing like daily. I have, I have not been out there, but I know that uh, Shannon and Lexi have been out there uh, and they contact folks, tell them that they can't be there. Um, part of the issue ultimately ends up, you know, when we go and contact people in one camp, uh, they generally do tend to grab their stuff and go, but then they find themselves in another area. So we, we tend to end up pushing them from one place to another. But I know that they've been out there and made contact uh, and they're trying to work to, to get that area cleaned up. All right, any more questions? I see no hands. So do we have any items for new discussion? Can I, I just real, sorry, can I real quick before we go off of this topic? Sure, um, sure. What's the, uh, I don't know, Jeff, maybe um, what, what is our kind of timeline on this? What are you, what are you thinking um, when we get to closer to action on this one? Yeah. So this one will likely be I'm looking ahead here. Uh, we would look at probably business on your April 19th agenda uh, and then action on your May 3rd agenda. Um, uh, at the moment, and that's all subject to change, of course. But that's uh, we have the looking ahead. That's what we're looking at um, uh, as far as this one is concerned. As long as we didn't hear any major changes or concerns that the council had this evening, which I haven't heard any, except uh, uh, perhaps expanding that definition of uh, uh, organizations that can help. That seems to be a pretty simple uh, research project, and making sure we check in with our city attorney, and we're not violating. Uh, uh, any RCWs or administrative codes, uh, we should be able to get that to you on the April 19th agenda for business. Yes. Sounds, Sounds good. Thank you. I'm, I'm all for moving this forward to a business item. So. Okay. Right. Uh, now do we have a new discussion? I do, I do. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, the city of Lacey provides a uh, movie night at their park um, during the summer hours, and I saw it on a on a post, and uh, they asked the people what movies they like to see, and thought, hey, that is a great idea. If we can piggyback off of the music at the park, we could do music at the park on Thursday, movie night on Friday. This city ran actually. Um, um, we have equipment. Mark said today, and I talked to Jeff, and he said he could put that on a business. I'm sorry, on a study session for us in April if the council would like to do that. I think it's great. We just, we say two fun fulfilled nights at Neyland Park. We got music on Thursday and we have movies on Friday. Come on down, you know. Um, what do you guys think? I got one thumbs up there. I got two. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, I was just curious if there's a ways for the city to use like uh, LTAC funds for something like this. We had that conversation yes, today, and there is. How how would that work? And I mean, do, do we have to put a our own grant together and submit it to the committee? Is that how that would work? Okay. Yes, uh, we would do. City staff would do that. I'm all for the community events. I think it's great. Brings uh, the neighborhood pride out too, and helps us hopefully solve some of these other other sort of code compliance issues too, when more people are out and about and uh, especially in our parks. So it'd be great if we can do it. All right, cool. So if there is nothing else for, for staff tonight, then we'll adjourn this meeting at 6.24 PM.